All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay, great. So there we go. So we're going to talk about the importance of headrests for function transportation um, and data that was collected in a retrospective study and a prospective study. Uh, disclosures, uh, financial, the study was funded by Headovations with the results blinded to the company management. Uh, myself and uh, Zora Filber, we serve as consultants for the company as part of their work. And you can see them downstairs um, at the uh, at the ex exhibit, Headovations. Okay, so I'm kind of preaching to the to the choir here about the importance of sitting, um, but in independent sitting when we're talking about children, a major ma milestone in the child's development. It's a complex skill that, in that involves core stability. And when uh, stability enables, what it enables us the use of hands. But to, there are uh, conditions where independent sitting is not possible. And so different external uh, support or positions are needed, tilt and recline, going back to your own uh, talk, um, but external supports as well. So belts, side supports, tables, and headrest. So this talk is going to talk about headrest. And if you were at Bart and uh, Felipe's uh, discussion yesterday, they talked a lot about uh, the segmental, the multi-segmental, uh, about seating. So this is just one area of uh, looking at um, what we can do for, for helping seating. So the importance of headrest. So first of all, the headrest, it, it protects the head uh, and the, uh, the neck. It helps us with postural alignment when uh, when possible. It helps us with respiration, swallowing, vision, communication, transportation. It supports us in the in the recline and the tilt position, and it also enables us uh, social interaction and uh, participation. There are not a lot of studies out on headrest. There's one uh, scoping review that was done not long ago by Gears, um, and it has all of the information there, so you should you can uh, see that there. Um, but the data is not very strong. There's not a lot of RCTs out there. And so we're starting to look at headrest and to see their impact on function and the usability of them. So when looking at the headrest, we have different uh, areas of support, occipital and the sub, the posterior, the lateral, anterior, and a combination of both. And we're seeing them, and there's a lot of good um, uh, examples downstairs. So... The, we were able to do this uh, study because we have at our hospital a lending program for headrest, although we have universal health care in Israel um, and the uh, equipment is funded, uh, you want to make sure that the person gets the right equipment. And so the headrest is, as we said before, is a very important um, element of part of the seating after the cushion and, uh, and other things. But um, the headrest themselves are something that we want to let the child try out before uh, purchasing it and making sure that they get the right kind. So we we funded, our hospital funded a lending program. We bought about 30 different headrests, 12 different types, tel, uh, different sizes. And th these are some of the uh, examples of the ones that we had, the I2I, the Savant, the Headmaster Collar, the Dunmar, Whitmire, Autobook, the Head Aloft and the Head Ovations 360. Uh, in 20, and we started this program in 2018. In 2020, uh, we had an opportunity to start working with head ovations uh, as part of a co-design uh, in uh, the innovation to help uh, um, develop the the um, headrest, the uh, head ovation, the head aloft, and the 360. Uh, and we decided that we wanted to look at uh, the program and to see what um, what impact we had on the use of the headrest. So, as I said, we wanted to look at the usability and the impact on their function. Um, so there's two stages of this study. I'm going to report on the full retrospective study and the initial um, data from the uh, prospective. So the, we, we looked at all of the uh, participants from the retrospective uh, from the 2018 to 2022 all of the children that were that had borrowed a headrest. Uh, we got our demographics details from our electronic medical uh, records. And what we did is we sent out an online survey through the REDCap uh, software, so it would be anonymized. So the two stages, the first is a 45 participants, age two to 22. And the prospective study will be up to 30 participants, ages two to 22 as well. We had the results now for six, and in the pr retrospective study, all 45. Okay, so we use the classification scales. If it was a CP, we use the GMFCS, MAX, CFCS, EDAX, and the VFCS. 
And if it was a neuromuscular patient, we use the Brook and the Vignus in stage one and the same classification scales for stage two, two, but we did add the LSS and the SPCM to do a seating uh, evaluation at baseline and at the end. So the outcome measures that we use is a functional scale, the SUS, the system usability scale, and um, stage two, we're gonna be looking also at a mealtime log to see um, if mealtime has become a shorter duration using a proper headrest. So the demographic characteristics of the retrospective study, we have, as I said, 45, um, 31 males, 14, 33 uh, females, 33 in the special education, 12, 12 in others, 21 of this of uh, CP, seven neuromuscular, TBI at four and 13 with others. Um, looking at manual wheelchairs, 39 could not propel at all, or six and six could propel a little bit. The LSS, 32 of them were level uh, one that needed um, from head down and from the shoulders down too, and a few also at the trunk and below. The, C the CP group, um, three of them were at the GMFCS level four and 18 were at five. Uh, okay, so the headrest, the headrest, the headrest types that were used, 40% of the, of the uh, headrests were either a head aloft or a head ovation, 24% were, were the savant headrest, uh, and 36 were others. And examples of them uh, you can see here is the I2I, the headmaster collar, um, and some of the others, uh, the one that ETAC or from uh, Autobook. And so looking at the SUS, and uh, the SUS is a scale that has 10 questions that talk about the usability of the certain technology that uh, or uh, tool that you want to look at. Uh, there's um, uh, positive questions and there's negative questions. And what I've uh, looked at here, there's an average score. I think I would like to use this tool frequently, 3.7 or the percent there is of the positive responses towards all of these questions. So the, you will see that, for example, um, number two that says, I found the tool unnecessarily complex, the score is low. And that's good because uh, we want that to, uh, to be low looking at a headrest. So you can see that I've uh, um, focused a couple of, uh, of the questions here. So I think I would like to use this tool frequently. 66% had positive response. I thought the tool was easy to use. Um, 87, you, and you can use this for any uh, technology that you're using. So just take that out and put headrest. Um, I found that the various function this tool were very well integrated, 61%, and 95% said I, um, I would imagine that most people would learn to use this tool quickly. Uh, and the 73, I felt very confident using the tool. So that's one way to look at it. And then we looked at the same data, looking at uh, 10 questions of function. If the headrest improved uh, eating, swallowing, breathing, uh, the head position, um, control and transportation. And here too, you can see the positive answers um, uh, on the right. Uh, so improved head position, 84% said that they felt that their head, their head position had improved using the headrest. Uh, 73, it was improved commun communication. Uh, and ITAC 76. Um, and in transportation, you could see that if used in transportation, the improved head control during the ride, 74%. So we wanted to look at the uh, connections or the, or the associations between the specific type of headrest and the questions that we saw at the, U at the SUS and the, uh, functional, uh, the function questions. So the first question of the SUS was if they wanted to use uh, the headrest. And so there was a very, uh, there was a significant association between the type of headrest and the question of the, the first question of the SUS. 83% um, of the uh, head ovation users um, wanted, uh, felt very strongly about uh, using uh, the headrest. The savant, as you can see, is also very high. And the other headrest was, uh, was 37 and it was a significant association. Another significant association was found between the headrest and the function, uh, specifically on the control, improved head control during transportation. So 80% of the head ovation uh, users felt that they were uh, um, had better control. Savant 70% and others uh, 28%. Uh, and this too was a significant association. It's interesting to look at that there are other important associations, although they're not significant, but you can see here, I hope. 
um, the difference between the head ovation, the savant, and others in better head position, less fatigue, uh, improved eye ca contact that we, or we want very much to help our patients try and improve that, and improved breathing. So you can see here the differences, the um, orange being others, the green being savant, and blue being uh, the head ovation, the two different headrests. The summary of the retrospective study. So most of our kids are in the special education. The majority of the participants were LSS2. Um, a lot of them, 80% 80, 80 of or more, um, had a positive experience using their headrest. And as I said before, the, associ the significant associations was between wanting to use it and the control in transportation. So the prospective study, as I said, it's ongoing, and we're, we have the initial data for the six for, for the fix, first six participants. Uh, this too is um, we're using the lending program, and what they do is they lend uh, out the headrest that after a clinical evaluation we decide which one uh, we want to set up uh, for them. There's as, as I said, twelve different kinds. So they take the headrest for two weeks. They'll be filling out the forms, and if that headrest was not good enough for them, they can they can come back and try a different headrest until they choose the right one that they uh, that they would like to be um, uh, fitted on their wheelchair. So we have, of course, the um, in, uh, informed consent forms, the parent self-report baseline, and they tried for two weeks. Here too, they use the SUS and the function, but we also use the mealtime uh, log. So for this, for the six first six participants, uh, we're also seeing male, the, the, a uh, male and female special uh, special ed, all of them. All of them need uh, support from head down, and uh, two out of the six um, for now are uh, ventilator dependent. I didn't put the uh, the um, percents in because it's a very small um, data set at the moment, but you can see here that I uh, I think I would like to use the tool frequently is number four, uh, average of four. Um, I thought this tool was easy to use. Uh, I would imagine that most people would learn to use this tool very quickly. Um, and I feel very confident uh, using the tool. You can see the very high um, grade there of, uh, of five. There's not enough data yet to do with the associations that I did in the retrospe retrospective study, but I think that's something that we're gonna be seeing uh, the, uh, the difference in uh, in the different headrests and how it affects their function. Um, we have a little data, the decreased tiredness in 4.3 average, uh, improved in communication, improved eye contact, which I think is very important when we want, when we uh, work with our patients. Uh, and if used in transportation, improved head control doing, during the ride. Um, so in summary, uh, headrests, as we know, provide important support for communication, breathing, swallowing, vision, and transportation, as we saw in this study. Uh, the trial period is essential for choosing the appropriate headrest that improves uh, function. Without that, uh, the standard headrest doesn't usually or doesn't necessarily give us the support that we need. And so trying out a headrest and making sure that the uh, clinicians are, um, have access to be able to, to do that is something that is very important. We'd like to thank the participants and their families for their cooperations, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.